Hey everybody, Steve here and welcome to The Very Life. And this video is the Hobby Project 0002. A little bit of backstory, since I retired in Korea, I figured I needed some type of hobby. And so I said, yeah, sure, let's let's pick up some, some miniatures and, and paint those things, because that should be relaxing. And so I ran across these things called Warhammer. And I saw some Space Marines and I was like, hey, that looks kind of cool. So I started out with that. I'm a noob <laughs> when it comes to painting. Uh, it ends up, these things are so small. I didn't realize how small these miniatures are. And as you can see, I mean, these, these guys are like, they're that. That's like one and three quarter inches tall. And some of you have let me know that these are larger than the original miniatures of Warhammer 40k. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Also, a little bit of a recap. I thought, you know, well, I'm going to need some miniatures. So I picked up some Primaris Intercessors. So I got those guys. And I picked up some Krylon, you know, the spray can primer, because I knew that you had to prime those things up before you paint them. And then I also picked up this Warhammer uh, little 13 paint set and tools. And uh, I was amazed at the difference of colors in the names of colors and the things in which we would normally call like blue or silver had turned into lead belcher. Green isn't green anymore, it's tesseract glow. There's a number of interesting names and labels for these. And what some of you have been so kind to inform me about is that these colors are named after Warhammer lore. So apparently, the color change did not happen with the new Common Core math. I thought just everything was upended. We've got Common Core math and now it's it's leached into the colors and colors are no longer colors that we normally use, but that's not the case. So I appreciate the correction on that. It's good to know that I wasn't going crazy. So apparently there's this goes deeper into the rabbit hole than I thought. So there's a lot of Warhammer lore. I, apparently I've got to read up on that and uh, from what I found just a little bit of reading I've done Warhammer goes back something like 30,000 years you have the Imperium and you have bad guys and good guys and super genetically human advanced soldiers like the Space Marines uh, fighting against fallen Space Marines and aliens and demon like things that are you know they're going head to head and it's just yeah it's, it's kind of crazy. So with that being said, I did the first video and showed how I had done some hand painting of the figure that you can see here because I'm starting from scratch. And so basically it was grabbing some paints, throw some paint on, kind of, okay, let's see what happens. And a number of you have been so kind to help me along this process. And what we're going to end up doing is answering some questions because there was a lot of questions that came first from my first video, and I want to thank you all for asking and presenting the information, recommendations, the whole nine yards. You guys are awesome. You warriors are tops. The biggest question was, see the pitting on these characters? Where did the pitting come from? Well, I'm going to answer that question. That came from this right here, the Krylon spray paint. And whether I didn't shake the can up enough, uh, I did for about a minute and a half, two minutes, and then I went outside, spray painted those guys, and that's where the pitting came from. So thankfully, it wasn't planned, but thankfully that kind of gives it a distressed look. Apparently that's what I'm going to, that's the excuse, is that even though it was unplanned, it's, it, it looks halfway decent. But I did learn my lesson. With that being said, we're going to take a look at some Vallejo Mecha Primer in black and compare this to that when we paint some other parts, even without using an airbrush, because this is airbrush primer. And you will see there is a huge difference between the two. And I just want to thank everybody for cluing me in and giving me a hint that Krylon is, is not the way to go. Now, the other thing we're going to end up doing is uh, going through the things that you have helped me improve on, and we're going to take a look at some of those things. So, let's get started. Oh, by the way, in case you're wondering, i got to take this camera and take it off, and I'm going to put it up on here so we can get that top-down view. So... Now, the first thing that we learned that is very important is model prep. Now, this kind of reminds me of 
preparing once somebody brought it to my attention. It made total sense. I'm not sure why I didn't think of it before. I thought with the small, small size of these miniatures, I didn't think it would be that big of a deal. But when we're looking at miniatures and seeing everything, it is so true that when you paint something, yeah, you're going to see all the imperfections and the paint is going to magnify those small imperfections. So the first thing we're gonna end up doing is taking this piece right here. So we're gonna zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. So we're talking about this piece right here. And as you can see, there's three connection points to where the item is actually connected up to this injection molded frame that it's on. So we're gonna go ahead and use these cutters here and we're gonna make sure that this flat portion is going to be up against the model itself. And then the cutaway portion is going to be, as you see there, so we're not gonna cut into the model, but we wanna get as close as we can and then we'll clip that off. And then we'll go to the other one by the shoulder and we'll clip that off. And then the last one by the barrel. Because we don't want to cut the barrel off, but we want to get a nice, nice good cut. Boom. And there is our part. Now the thing with this that you can see is that you're going to have some lines of where that connector, so we can see right there that there is a little bit of rough edging there of where that sprue and where the plastic that you cut away. And we can also see the same thing on the other side, like the top of the gun there. You see that little white discoloration? And then of course we also see it on the, the barrel right there. Well, what we can end up doing with any paint prep, like I equate this to painting a wall, you want to take a look at any imperfections and then you're going to sand those down. So in this paint kit was included this little file. And this little file, we can go ahead and take this on and kind of file down these rough areas. And what we can do is we can sand down these parts. Now, other people have informed me that I should get an X-Acto knife. And I just so happen to have said knife. Picked one up the other day after I read the recommendations, so thank you for that very much. And then what we can end up doing is kind of scraping the blade just right along there to get away that injection mold contact where we cut it away so we can kind of smooth that out. I don't think that blue light is doing us any good. Here, let me, let me fix that. Ah. That is bueno. So that's what we end up seeing, uh, a lot better. But we can take this blade and what we can end up doing is scraping this, that line off of there or that contact, that rough edge of where we cut it off with our nippers. And we can smooth that out because that smoothed out piece will look smooth when we put primer and then when we put paint on it. Piece prep is important and be careful with Sharp things, don't stab yourself, that would be bad. Okay, now for this next piece, we gotta go go move the camera and go back. So let's do that. Get off. Uh, okay. All right, so we came back to this point of view and we talked about how piece prep or item prep is really important. The next thing we're gonna talk about is primer because I saw some videos and said, oh, just, just take some primer. You know, shake it up for a few minutes, prime it, boom, you'll be good to go. And uh, yeah, that produced some interesting results. So what you can end up seeing here is that again, there was a lot of pitting that was involved. And uh, yeah, that's not what I was going for. Even though the pitting, I can say, you know, hey, you know, look, kind of gives it that distressed look. That was not planned at all, so I kind of lucked out on that. People had recommended using some good primer, so what I ended up doing is getting some Vallejo uh, Black Mecca Primer. 
and this stuff is pretty nice. Now this is water-based acrylic airbrush primer, so apparently you can put this in an airbrush, boom, go to town, and you will get some great finish. I figured, well, I'll use this and we'll prime some of these spare pieces that we have, just like we cut out, and we'll see the difference between this and uh, the Krylon, and, and the differences are amazing. So let's, let's look at those differences. Yeah, the Krylon primed figure with the pitting, which is so evident now that I can see it. It's just like, wow, that's absolutely crazy. And that could be a combination of me not shaking this up enough. Could also be combined that I was, as some people pointed out, that I was too close to the figures. Yeah, obviously I was a little too close. And all of those things combined resulted in a very poor priming of this item. So you can see the pitting on there, yeah, through the light, and it's very shiny. Now I should say that this was satin and it's got a little bit of shine to it. They did not have any matte paint uh, primer for this. So this is what I was stuck with. So it is what it is. Okay, so we have our little piece there and we're gonna get some of this mega primer. And we'll just put a few, maybe a dot or so, one, two. And I think that will be good enough for our demonstration purposes. A lot of you, we're telling you about painting and that you can thin this stuff out. Honestly, I didn't know you could thin out acrylic paints with water. And, uh, you know, on further investigation, I found that you could uh, thin it out with water and then also some thinner as well. So if we just end up going and just kind of putting a, a nice gentle coat on this, what we'll end up seeing is just a vast improvement compared to the spray can primer in satin. We'll kind of zoom in and we'll do a, a comparison of those two there. But yeah, there's, there's a huge difference between what we see with the Krylon. You know, you can see the shiny areas, you can see the pitting. There, you can really see it there on that lower leg piece. And then when we go over to this piece here, obviously there's a huge difference between the Vallejo and how smooth and that matte finish is on that part compared to the satin of the Krylon and the pitting that was on there. Alrighty, so there you have it. Uh, there is a huge difference between primers, whether you're using Krylon and even the way that I use this, you still need to pay attention and make sure that you get the matte primer. Uh, I just kind of liken this to watching the videos online of people painting plastic spoons for practicing with your airbrush or even practicing with a paintbrush on colors. You got to have that primer on there. It makes your other colors that you're painting with stick to it. It's well dispersed and it adheres better. Uh, just so many better qualities with a good primer versus, yeah, this stuff here. So, like I said, I ended up getting the Vallejo primer that I picked up at a local store here in Korea. And uh, the next step is to use that in airbrush. But that's going to be in another video. All right, I'm going to do an interruption and we have to stop right here and i apologize for that uh, my time management has been severely lacking and that's something i need to address so what you've watched so far is hobby project 0002 and because as i'm editing this video it ends up that it's entirely too long it's like 30 minutes i'm going to end this one right here and so basically i'll split this video into two videos so the next video will be hobby project 0002.5 and I will try to keep the future videos between 10 and 12 minutes long, and then we'll call it good. So at this point, thank you all for watching. Uh, it's been great, the information that you all have given me, the tips and tricks, strategies, the, the videos that I get to watch. I have a long way to go when it comes to painting miniatures and having them look good. So again, uh, from the bottom of the heart, thank you all for that. And we'll see you on the next video, which will be the 0002.5.
So that will be coming up real close. Thanks for understanding. Yeah, as if you thought there wouldn't be any bloopers, here you go. Take two. <laughs> and take three. Okay. What are we talking? Preparing our models? Is that what it was? Crap. Figure crap. Take four. Seriously? <laughs> Try it again. Five. Take five. Alrighty, yeah, this is the blooper part of the reel, and as you can see, this is a DJI wireless microphone system, which is supposed to be really nice. I was hoping to record better quality audio, and even though I have it on, if you don't turn it on, it won't record. What are the odds of that happening? Seriously. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to stay up to date with what's going on with us. The Buried Life is where we retired in Korea. We'll see you on the next video. Peace.